I challenged myself to beat the Legend of Dragoon with only one character, the OG, the fire guy, Dart. Why? Well, I played this game through so many times that it feels easy now, and I'm bored with my life, so it's time. The rules for this challenge. Rule number one, only Dart can do damage to the enemy, and there is only one exception to that that we will discuss when I get to it in the video. Rule number two, use Dragoon form as little as possible. And number three, until everybody else is dead, Dart must use the defend command. And rule number four is that if a non-damaging action by a character who is not Dart gives a buff to Dart, Dart must defend until that buff is gone. So I can't use my side characters to say give Dart a speed buff and a power buff and then let them die. Well, technically I can, but Dart's gonna lose the benefit of those items if I do that. Now, you might notice that these rules are different than some other RPG runs, and the reason for this is that in The Legend of Dragoon, your characters cannot attack themselves. Well, at least not on purpose. They can do it if they're inflicted with confusion or bewitched status. In addition, your characters auto revive with one HP upon death. So all this put together means that you have to rely on RNG to kill your characters. You just gotta hope that the enemies hit your other characters first and not dart. And there are some tricks to getting that to happen, which I will talk about a little bit later in the run. So with all that being said, let's start the run. The beginning of the game already basically is a dart solo run. There's nobody else with him. I fight the soldiers, I pick up some stardust, I make sure I get the chest, and then I head on to Helena Prison to rescue Shanna. And during my first battle in Helena Prison, I noticed something bad. In Helena Prison, the run command is not available. Now, in this game, there are three commands that don't do damage. The first is run. Obviously, you try to run away. And we'll have to talk a little bit more about the run mechanic later, but it's disabled for this fight anyway, so we'll let it go. The second is the item command. Now, there are items that do damage to enemies. However, there are plenty that don't. Healing potions don't, repeatable items don't, although they have some effects that can cause buffs, which we talked about earlier in the rules. However, you only have a limit of 32 items in your inventory, so those actions will eventually run out. And the third command is Defend. Now, Defend is a unique command in The Legend of Dragoon, and that's because it does two things. The first is that it halves all damage, all magical and physical damage, and the second is that it heals your active character by 10%. So knowing this, I buy a bunch of healing potions from the shop. Many more than I would ever need, and you will see why in just a moment. Because the next thing of note that happens is that I run into Lavitz and he joins my party. But when I'm fighting the Helena guards, what I realize is that they can only do two damage to him. Now, I have enough healing potions that he could use a few of those before using physical attacks, but it's at this point in the game that I realize that if he defends, he's not going to die. The physical damage of the Helena guards will be only one damage per turn if Lavitz is defending and he'll be recovering 10 HP per turn, so the math just doesn't add up. There's no way that they'll be able to kill him at all. So in this battle, I actually came up with a fifth rule. If an enemy cannot kill one of your side characters, then what they're allowed to do is use their weakest addition without completing that addition. But what I realized about the Helena guards is that when they're lower than half health, they start using magic attacks instead of physical attacks. So what I actually do is have Lavitz attack each of them once and then he starts using healing potions on Dart so that they'll just use magic on him. And so eventually he does die and I have Dart finish them all off and Lavitz is now at a delicious one HP. And that's gonna make the rest of this part of the run a lot easier. I find Shanna. There's a mandatory battle with some guards right after Shanna joins the party, but she's actually not in the battle, so that's fine. And nothing really happens until we get to Frugal. And Frugal shows us that the early game final boss is actually Shanna. It takes about a bajillion turns for her to die, and it takes so long that I have to have Dart defend and she attacks, which kills off three of Frugal's guards, which I know seems sort of counterintuitive to this challenge, but let's be real, Dart could have done this all alone. So again, not feeling too bad about this, and I'm sure it'll get better later as Dart gets more levels. And Dart finishes off this battle with very little difficulty when <laughs> Shanna is dead, and we move on. We escape Helena Prison. Now, at this point in the game, 
the escape command becomes available, and that is very important to this run. It means that the two characters that need to die in the battle can now just use the escape command rather than defending or using items. But if they fail to escape a battle and both of the side characters die, that's actually good for us, because it means I can complete the battle, gain a little bit more gold, a little more experience, possibly get an item from the enemy that we just killed as well. But there's one complication here, and that is the poison status. Now, statuses in general are going to be a big issue in this run, and we will talk about that as we see them, but poison is a particularly bad one, especially in the early game. And the reason for that is that poison takes away a flat 10% of your HP every time you act. Now, normally in this game, you can heal HP by defending, but since defending restores 10% HP and poison takes away 10% HP, these two things cancel each other out. And therefore, if you want to attack, you're going to lose HP and eventually going to have to use all of your healing items, which is not great. So I do get poisoned in this cavern and I remove it, but I realize I only have one more body purifier left to get rid of more poison. And I know that the snake enemy at the end of this cavern does poison damage, so I make sure to get the poison guard, I equip it to dart, and I'm feeling a lot safer for the next boss battle. And honestly, the snake boss battle goes pretty uneventfully. Everyone dies pretty quickly, dart doesn't get poisoned, and everyone's happy. And after the battle, Shanna teaches the snake to sit. And as an owner of two cats, I appreciate that she's able to teach us snake tricks, because my cats won't learn anything. But we move on. So next we head to Bale, and I spend a lot of time getting Stardust in Bale, because there are some Stardust items that are going to be very useful later. Well, one in particular, but we'll get there. We have a chat with King Albert, we talk with Lavitz's mom, and then we head to Hoax. And in a Hoax, there are two boss battles. The first is against the Sandora Elite, and this battle actually goes pretty smoothly, but what I'm starting to notice is that the speed stat of these enemies is actually quite high when Dart is alone. Now, the game's speed stats are more balanced if you have three characters, because every single character will usually get to act in sequence. So enemies won't get to attacks before at least one of your characters gets to go. But when you just have Dart, it's not uncommon for enemies to get two attacks in a row. So while it's not insurmountable by any means, you do have to plan ahead for it and not go too low on your health points. In any case, the Sandora Elite goes down pretty smoothly, and then we head on to Kongol. So Lavitz dies, and I start with a magic item because I want this battle to go a little bit more quickly than the last one. The Sandora Elite fight was smooth, but it was slow. But what's really funny about this battle, honestly, is that Kongol, when he joins your party later in the game, is one of the slowest characters ever. But in this battle, he often gets double turns, so that literally makes no sense. He's just the same person, but less strong. Or maybe it's that our party is less strong when we're fighting Kongol than later in the game when we get Kongol, so relatively, he's less strong than us when he joins. And Kongol goes down very quickly. And next, we go to the Nugget Bridge part of the run, where we have to do fights with five sets of troops in a row. It's like Pokemon's Nugget Bridge. And the normal fights go pretty smoothly, but the final fight where you have to fight another elite soldier has a little bit of a complication, and that is that once this soldier gets down to half health, he starts using the stun status. But stun actually isn't as bad as it is in a normal game. And the reason for that is that when you get hit by an attack that does damage, stun goes away. So this enemy hits me with stun, and then hits me with an attack, and then I get up, and I can either attack him or heal if I need to. So, not too bad. And of course, defending prevents all status effects, so if I really want to, I can just defend to recover instead of using my healing potions. Which I do, but I also just want to get through this battle pretty quickly, so I do use some healing potions. And after that battle, Double Slash is maxed out, so I switch my addition to Burning Rush, which might seem like a weird choice, but Volcano does more damage than Burning Rush, so I want to save that for a fight where a boss has a ton of HP so I can just get through it more quickly. And in the forest, I find my first repeat item, the Magic Stone of Signet. Now, you might think this item is kind of useless because it prevents normal enemies from acting and doesn't work on bosses, but it has one niche use in this kind of run, which is that it is a non-damaging action. So now, if escape isn't available, I have another thing that Shanna or Lavitz can do before I have to start using my healing potions to give the boss a chance to kill them. And now we head to Mount Valud and the first actual challenge of the run. Well, the first actual challenge that doesn't involve getting our other characters killed anyway. It is the first Virage. So ignoring status for a moment, this guy has an arm that can do damage, a head that can do damage, and they can do about 80 damage to Dart, which is about a third of his health in one turn. But in addition, it can also do like a sort of screamy spell that can cause multiple status effects. It can cause the Confuse status, which causes Dart to act erratically, possibly attack himself. He can defend or try to run away as well. It can cause the Fear status, which doubles all damage dealt to Dart and halves all of the damage that he does 
or it can cause the Dispirited status, which prevents him from gaining Dragoon points. Oh, in case I forgot to mention it, we got Dart's Dragoon Spirit, which we're trying our best not to use. So in this first battle, I equip the Panic Guard, which prevents Confuse status, and it does seem to be going pretty well. I get inflicted by Fear, but I do have one Body Purifier, so I'm able to use that to dispel the status, and then I get inflicted by Dispiriting, which isn't too bad. And then I get inflicted by the Fear status, which I cannot cure because I don't have another Mind Purifier. So I end up getting completely bodied by his attacks because now he's doing two-thirds of my health in one turn, and I just can't compete with that. If I were able to Dragoon at this point, I would be able to just get rid of the Fear status and be okay, but I can't, so I ultimately take my first death in this battle. But I recover from that and try again, and I change up my strategy a little bit the second time that I do this battle. The first thing that I do is I equip the Night Shield, because that'll decrease the amount of damage that he does from one-third to about a quarter, which doesn't seem like much, but it does matter, and it will make it so that I don't have to use as many health potions. Granted, I still have to worry about the confused status, but I think I can deal with that. And my approach this time is that I'm going to focus on the body instead of trying to kill the arm first. The arm does damage, but it regenerates eventually, so killing it doesn't do that much. So I do get confused early in the battle, and I get lucky with the RNG, dart defends, so I don't take a ton of damage. And then I get lucky, and the next status effect that I get is dispirited, which is just fine. So I work really hard to finish off the body, and once that is finished off, the boss can't inflict any more status effects, so the battle becomes a lot easier. The only thing left to do is to kill the head, and I'm able to do that without using my Dragoon form at all. So I'm super happy about that. And I move on through Mount Falud to the Firebird fight, which is honestly really easy. I think that a lot of the Firebird's attacks are fire elemental, and Dart is fire innate, so there's no real issue there. Dart doesn't take much damage from anything, particularly since he's now overleveled. And this is a great time to talk a little bit about experience in the Legend of Dragoon. If all of your other characters die, all of the experience goes to your main character who's still alive. But the off-field characters gain experience too, and in fact, the way that it works is that they gain half as much experience as one character gains in the battle. So by having Dart get all of the experience from this battle, Rose actually gets one and a half times the amount of experience from off-field that she would have normally gotten from being in the battle. So it's kind of an interesting mechanism because it means that your characters off-field actually become more powerful, which could create a complication if you don't distribute that experience evenly. Because remember, if your side characters are too powerful, they won't die as quickly, which is bad. Granted, one of the goals of this run is to keep everyone at HP of just one so that they'll die with just one attack. But sometimes that's not possible, which we'll see a little bit later in the run. But we move on to the Poisoned Forest. And now it's time to fight Graham, the Green Dragoon, and I re-equip the Poison Guard because I know that the Green Dragon can inflict poison. Graham has terrible magic defense, so I use a couple pellets against him. I do use my Dragoon form to get rid of the fear status, which his dragon afflicts, though. And I probably could have avoided doing that had I just packed a couple of mind purifiers, but my bad. But we beat the battle and we move on. So then I get some new armor from a chest and I head to Lohan, where we find out that Shanna is ill from poison, which means we have to go back through the forest and into the domain of Shirley. And our next battle is with Drake the Bandit, who is surprisingly a little bit challenging, mainly because of his speed. Fortunately, he doesn't do any status effects, though, but he does have that annoying net attack that blocks all of your attacks until you destroy it, and he can also throw bombs at your team. However, because two of my teammates are dead, I really only have to worry about the center bomb, which is the one that attacks Dart. The other two are just duds. I should also mention that I put Rose into the party at this point because I don't want Rose to gain any more experience for the entire game. The one challenge of the late game is that every single character has a solo section where they have to do a battle on their own. Rose, however, doesn't get a solo section. She gets a section with just Dart, so I want to just let Dart carry through those sections and have Rose die as quickly as possible. So yeah, both of my characters die, and I beat Drake, and we move forward to the Shirley battle, which is entirely scripted. So really not too much to say about that battle. You just gotta answer the questions correctly. So we get the Silver Dragoon Spirit, we bring it back to Shanna, and she rejoins the party. Next up, we have the fighting tournament, which goes really quickly because Dart is super overleveled. We beat the first four contestants really quickly, and as usual, we get spanked by Lloyd, and that's how it's supposed to go. That's fine. Also, I would be happy to be spanked by Lloyd. Ooh, yeah. 
He floods my basement. And then Hashel joins the party, and he will be doing nothing, just like all the other party members. We find out that Albert has been kidnapped from the Kingdom of Bale and is being held at Helena Prison. So we head back there, and we get trapped with a monster, who is really not that much of a challenge. We kill him pretty easily. And while we're there, we get the Pandemonium item, which is really useful. If a party member uses it, it will direct all attacks from the enemy to them. It doesn't work on bosses, but for regular enemies, it allows us to get people killed before a boss fight, so we don't have to worry about it. And then we head to Frugal which I, of course, am thinking is going to be totally easy, just like the first frugal fight. Foreshadowing, I think not. So everything's initially going well, both of our characters die really quickly, and it looks like damage-wise, we're going to be able to deal with this battle pretty easily. Unfortunately, what I don't realize is that when frugal commands his dog to attack, it causes the confused status. And so what happens the first time that I do this battle is that Dart gets inflicted by confused and then attacks himself multiple times in a row, and I just can't recover from that. So I die. I was really not thinking that would happen. I thought this was going to be a super easy battle. I'm a little embarrassed that that happened and I'm kind of suffering here. But of course, I pick myself up and try again. This time I equip the panic guard to prevent confused status. Everyone else dies early. I'm able to get rid of the dog and bird and Frugal eventually goes down after a bunch of attacks. So thank God we made it through that battle. I didn't need to use Dragoon form and I'm feeling pretty good about things. But plot-wise, Lloyd tickles Lavitz with his pickle, and Lavitz goes down and has to pass off his Dragoon Spirit to Albert. I'm sure he's gonna be fine. This is just a temporary thing. I'm sure Lavitz will be back eventually. And now we head to the Black Castle, which is an interesting place because once again, we have inescapable regular battles. My personal hatred. We go through, we get the three stones, and then we head to Kong. Goal 2, and this battle was annoying. I'm not saying it was hard, it was actually pretty easy, but Kongol, for some reason, didn't want to kill my other two characters, so I end up wasting a lot of healing potions just trying to kill Kongol, but eventually he goes down, and then we head to Emperor Dole, and his battle takes a long time, but he ultimately goes down too, and we are now at the end of Disc 1. So we head to Tyberoa, and I advance the plot, and one of the first things that I do is I trade my Stardust into Martell to get the Physical Ring, which increases HP by 50%. I immediately give that to Dart because that will actually help him out in a lot of battles to recover HP more quickly. And we move on. We head to the Barrens where Dart's Dragoon Spirit gets stolen, which we don't really care about. We weren't using it much anyway. We head to Donau where I forget how to actually advance the plot, but we find out where the bandits are. We do recruit Meru though, and Meru is actually going to be quite useful because she's at a high level, but she is quite physically frail. So she will eventually be a great person to put in our party, even at a high level so that she can die quickly. And then we have to backtrack back to the capital to get permission to go to the Valley of Corrupted Gravity. And then we go through the Barrens again to the Valley of Corrupted Gravity. God, this game has a lot of backtracking. And we fight Virage number two. Well, Dart does. Nobody else does. And Virage number two actually presents a little bit of a challenge. Because even before I can get Rose and Albert killed, it uses an instant death ability. So how do I get past this guy? Well, I have a solution. I equip the Talisman to Dart, which prevents instant death attacks. So now if he tries tries to eat me, it will miss. Listen, it's hard to get the food into your mouth sometimes, I get it. So for this battle, because I'm getting impatient, I just use all of my strongest consumable magic items and eventually he goes down, not too bad. But we are at three deaths, and I'm hoping that I can make some better choices as we go through this run. But as you will see, there is more suffering to come. <laughs> I said come. In the Giganto home, I immediately pick up the bandit ring, which for some reason I give to Hashel. I think maybe I misremembered and thought that he had a solo battle here with the main boss. I was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. But in any case, I fight the next gangster boss, and that goes pretty smoothly. And the next fight is with Garrick and Moppy, and once again, the problem with this battle is not that they are, can actually kill me really easily. The problem is that Hashel is forced to participate in this battle, and it's not a solo battle, so I have to use just Dart. And Hashel is at full health, because I didn't think to get his health low before this battle. So it takes forever for Mappy to kill Hashel. And because I gave Hashel that bandit's ring, he gets a ton of turns, which I hate. He uses moon serenades, he uses everything, and ultimately doesn't actually have to do any physical attacks, which I'm happy about. But what I do realize is that Mappy actually has an instant kill attack, so I'm very glad 
glad that I didn't switch over the bandit ring to Dart, because Dart would have died to that. But once Hashel and Rose are both dead, the battle goes reasonably smoothly. Mappy and Garrick do a lot of damage, but not so much that Dart can't overcome it with defending and with using some healing potions. And we recruit Kongol to the party. Yes, some more dead weight. And Kongol will literally never be in the party. The reason for that is that Kongol has a solo battle later in the run where he actually wants to be at higher level. There's no reason he actually needs to be in the party except for that battle, so we'll just leave him out for the entire time. So we head back to the capital. I fail at the mini game where you get caught by the Garage Gang if you get seen several times, and then we recover Princess Emil, and we head to the fight with Linus. And this fight is one of the fights that I was most worried about. Linus has very powerful water magic, which does a ton of damage to Dart, so I'm hoping that his extra levels will help him just power through it. So as it turns out, Linus's most powerful magic, which is her single target ice spell, does about 500 damage to Dart. He has an HP of 1720, so it does a little bit under a third, and I can actually deal with that pretty well as long as Linus doesn't get too many double turns. Now she does get a few double turns, but most of the time she doesn't use that spell twice in a row because she also has ice magic that targets the entire party and everyone else in the party is dead. But the weird thing about this game is that single target magic does about 50% more than multi-target magic. Even if there's only one person alive, it still spreads out that damage among the entire party, so her multi-target ice spell does about 350 damage, which is really nothing. And Linus's physical attacks, by comparison, are pitiful. Dart has tons of physical defense at this point because of his extra levels and good armor, and so he tanks those pretty well. So ultimately, while Dart does get low on HP a couple of times, Linus just doesn't have any big tricks up her sleeve. She can't do any statuses. She generally doesn't get double turns, even though she does occasionally. And we take her down. And this is the easiest this fight has ever ever been. So now we head to Donau and we get on a boat and it's not our boat. It's somebody else's boat that we're just allowed to use, which is the best. And unfortunately, the next part of this run is just me talking to literally everyone in the party. This part is interesting. It provides a lot of exposition for the characters, but if you've seen it before, it's quite annoying and it takes a long time because everyone wants to have a conversation with the other party members. But eventually, once we're done with all of that, we get to the ghost ship. And in the ghost ship, it looks like everything's going pretty well. We go to the main cabin door, we go to the first lumpy space princess, which gets us an inescapable battle, but our characters are at one HP, so that's fine. And then we go to the second lumpy space princess fight where he actually participates in battle. And based on how this battle went, I wanted to hit myself because as it turns out, the lumpy space princesses can cast the bewitch status, which which basically is confused but worse because the only choice your characters have is to attack themselves. So what ends up happening is that Dart gets bewitched and attacks himself three times in a row and he dies. It's awful. I died to a random battle. How crazy is that? I thought that I would only die to boss battles and this is like a random battle on the ghost ship that I died to. Ah, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure that that won't happen again. There's no way that that could happen. How could I die to another random battle after this? There's just no way. And I'm sure it wouldn't be to the bewitch status. So uh, yeah, that's not uh, foreshadowing at all. But that is not the worst of my suffering because if you've watched my 16 tips and tricks for Legend of Dragoon video, you know that one of my first tips is to save, save the game often so that you don't have to go back and do stupid cutscenes again. And I didn't save after I got on the boat. So I have to do the whole talking to the party member thing again. And I am just beside myself, but I get through it. And I actually saved the game right before the phantom ship and all is well. I equip the ring that prevents bewitch status and I move on. Ugh. So I fight my way back to the lumpy space princess battle, and this time he cannot bewitch me. So this is good. And then we move on to the triple lumpy space princess battle. And they try to pull the same shit, but this time I am prepared, and so I conquer them. And I am feeling so much better now that I never have to fight them ever again in this run. In fact, I even brought extra consumable magic items so that I could just kill them more quickly, because I was done with them at this 
this point. I was not having it. Like, Lumpy Space Princess being the final boss of The Legend of Dragoon was not on my vision board when I started this run, so let's... Oh my god, I was so angry. So I go back to the ship to restock some light magic items because I know what's coming up next. And then we go to fight the Ghost Knights. And they go down really easy because I basically just use up all of my dancing rays and Dart has a pretty good magical attack stat. So Ghost Ship is done and I'm very happy to never have to come back to this part of the game. At least... Not for this run. So now we get Rose and we have to spend about an hour and a half doing exposition stuff, but eventually we do make it to Linus 2. And Linus 2 is kind of a pushover. Her attacks and her dragon attacks just don't do enough damage to be threatening. And so she goes down. But remember what I said earlier about probably not dying again to the bewitch status? Well, right after the Linus battle, I get into a fight with a random octopus enemy and guess what it does when it gets to have health it casts the bewitch status on me and i have removed the item that prevents the bewitch status so i get bewitched and i die again to a random encounter and i'm livid again but there is a silver lining which is that this time I remembered to save. I saved right after I beat Linus 2. So I go back to that save and I get to the end of disc 2. So the moral of the story, kids, is save often. Save often often. So now we're in Boatville, Shanna has a seizure or something, and we head off to fight the wolf thing. And it goes pretty smoothly because really the only thing that this wolf can do that's unusual is stun us. And of course, the next damaging move removes the stun status. So we're fine. We get through this battle pretty quickly. And the next two hours of the game are basically all exposition. Shanna gets COVID and can't do anything, and Miranda joins the party because, you know, you gotta have a white silver dragoon. Mary reveals she's a wingly. We go see all of her wiggly friends. I guess they're not really friends. They're kind of people that hate her now. And then we head to the magical city Cadessa, in which I experience death number six. And this should be no shock, but death number six is to bewitchment. I get bewitched by one of those stupid floating spinny things. I hate them. I thought those things were only for babies. But fortunately, again, this time I saved reasonably recently. So I just sort of go back to my save. I power through. I grab a bunch of items. I don't know if I'm really going to need them. I actually skip the power up item. It's just not that useful in this run. And we move on to the next Virage battle. And I was taking this very seriously. Really wanted to get through him before his lives turned to zero because I actually forgot what happened when his lives go to zero. And what happens is that he dies. So I don't really know why I even cared about this Virage. So we move on to the next boss, which is the Dragon Block Staff Monster. And this was an absolutely infuriating fight. So the Dragon Block Staff, in case you don't know, will occasionally decrease your party's levels. What this means is that all of the extra levels that Dart has will not matter anymore in terms of his statistics. Fortunately, when it does that, it doesn't decrease Dart's HP though, so he can still weather most attacks. But it made this fight go extremely slowly. The fight took over a half hour and I got down to my last healing item. I actually used a healing rain, which I was gonna sell to buy healing fogs, but it did not work out that way. But eventually I powered through, I beat it at like the very last second and I get the dragon block staff, which means it's time to head to Immortal Dragon Mountain to fight the divine dragon. But first, I head to the Crystal Palace to buy a bunch of healing fogs because I will definitely need healing items for this battle. But on the way to the immortal dragon, I pick up two amazing pieces of equipment. The first is the dragon helm, which will increase Dart to HP by 50%, making him a lot more bulky and of course able to recover more HP with both healing items and the defend command. And the second is the speed down item, which should be pretty obvious. It's a repeatable item that decreases speed. So I am ready to fight this guy. Now, in a normal battle, the Divine Dragon is actually quite difficult. He does a ton of damage to everyone, both physical and magical. So no one is safe unless they're a generalist. And even then, they're going to have a hard time surviving everything he can throw out at you. And the Divine Dragon has great speed. So in this solo run, I am a little bit worried that Dart's not going to be able to 
overcome the Divine Dragon when the Divine Dragon potentially gets two turns to buy one. As it turns out, though, the Divine Dragon in this kind of run is very much a pushover. What really makes the Divine Dragon difficult is not the fact that he does a lot of damage overall. It's that when your party is at a lower level, he can just one-shot you. But with Dart's increased HP from being at a higher level, it's not really an issue at all. I don't even come close to using all of my healing items because he just can't do enough damage to really threaten me. So I take him down, Lloyd Shang sungs his soul, and we move on. We head to the Kashua Glacier, where I have one of the easiest boss battles in the entire game against the Abominable Snowman, and we also beat Lloyd, who is really not a threat in this playthrough. Dart just has too much HP, and he can't do much to him. On my way out, I grab the Therapy Ring because my next boss battle is against one of the hardest bosses in a casual playthrough, the Polter Armor. This is the guy that gives you the Soul Eater, and he has three components. The first is the Sword, which just does physical attacks, but upon death, it'll cast an instant death spell, so you have to have the Talisman equipped to avoid it. The head performs command blocking, which will block one of the commands that Dart can use. It can block attack, item, or Dragoon. And finally, the body, which casts magic and can do tremendous damage, and in a casual playthrough, can often one-shot your entire team. But funny enough, with the Phoenix Helm and the Talisman, this boss battle is not hard. Dart just has so much health. There is one small issue though, which is that the helmet eventually blocks my item command, meaning that I can't heal. I just defend for a while, and then eventually it switches its command blocking to block Dart's attacks, so then I'm able to use items. And fortunately, I have some leftover light magic items that do tremendous damage to all three parts of the Polter Armor, so eventually he just goes down. Then we explore Dart's daddy issues, and Rose reveals that she She's his stepmom, or something like that. And we are on to disc four. We go through the desert and I grab the bandit shoes, which immediately go on dart for the rest of the game. In Ulara, I buy magical greaves for everyone for their solo battles. And then we do a ton of exploration to go to Aglis. I make sure to do all of the courage trials correctly so I can get the psych bomb X, which is gonna be a huge help later in the run. And then we fight the Kraken, who is a pushover in a casual game and is a pushover now. So so no big deal. But then we are on to Xenobatos. Now, before I talk about the bosses in Xenobatos, let me just say that this is one of my favorite cities. I plan to make a video all about the lore of the Legend of Dragoon, and I love that in the lost city of Xenobatos, all of the laws can be reversed. There are like 20 laws here, all of which do specific things. You can disable the robots that arrest you. You can disable random encounters. You can disable your own use of the shop, which is kind of crazy to me. And I buy the Red Dragoon armor because you really want it at this point. It's just a great balanced armor for Dart, and you don't really need the physical status protection that the Saint armor gives you at this point in the game. But in any case, the only thing I need to do is to change the law to let me go to the Signet Sphere. And I do that, and then we start the battle with the Xenobatos guards. This battle has three opponents. The guy on the left, whenever any of his colleagues die, will cast an instant death spell. And that means that you need the talisman for this battle. The one in the middle basically just does physical damage, so NBD. But the one on the right casts the petrify status, so I wasn't exactly sure how to get through this battle. So the first time going through, I decide I'm just going to brute force it. I use my power down and my speed down on the one on the right, the healer one, who uses petrify, and then I hit them all with my psych bomb X, which does huge damage, bringing all of them down to about half HP. But unfortunately, this causes the rightmost guard to use a petrify spell. And at this point, I don't know what to do, because the one on the left always will cast a death spell no matter what. And is it the same thing for the one on the right? But I had an idea, because the one on the right didn't cast a Petrify spell until I had cast Psych Bomb X. So maybe the Petrify spell was just a counter to magic damage. And so I go back into this fight with the Talisman equipped. I do not equip the D-Stone Amulet, hoping and praying that I'm right, that this hunch is correct. So I get the guard on the right down to about half health, and then I use power down and speed down, and I use my Psych Bomb X, and it kills her. And now I am free and clear. There's no more Petrify in my way. The guy on the left uses a death spell, which doesn't hit, and honestly, that makes my life easier, because that means he's not doing damage. But we get through this fight, and I have never been happier. This, I thought, was going to be the biggest obstacle, because two characters can basically do instant death in different ways, and you cannot block 
both of them. But this is going to pave the way for all of my other solo runs. So very excited that this worked out. So now we modify the law again to allow us to teleport to the Death City Mayfill. And there, I skip the three dragon fights. I probably will go back and do them all again with Dart, but I honestly don't think they're going to be that difficult. And we move on and we find Labbits. See, I told you he'd be back. Pickle can't keep him down, you know? And it took me a little bit of time to figure this out, but when Lavitz is facing forward, attacks do nothing to him. And if you attack him, he will then attack another person in your party. He will not attack the person who attacked. So the only way that I can get my two other party members killed is to have Dart attack, and then Lavitz will attack those other party members. But again, fortunately, Dart's attacks will do zero damage. So I do that, and then I talk to Lavitz, and I kill the thing on his back, which leads to Zackwell emerging. And this battle is pretty easy, just like a lot of the other boss battles. It's pretty standard once you stab Lavitz in the back. And that's a phrase I never thought I'd say. So now we climb up the tree and I make a little bit of a mistake here. I accidentally drink some of the tree water, which heals my entire party, but it's not that big a deal. Everything's fine. Everything's fine because Rose is so weak that anything that hits her is probably gonna kill her, and Meru is also pretty weak, so she'll die pretty quickly anyway. It's gonna be okay. But I head on to the Caterpillar boss, who really isn't that big a deal. I actually re-equip the Saint Armor, because I know this Caterpillar butterfly can do some status effect stuff, and I re-equip the Phoenix Plume for the same reason. And she goes down pretty quickly, and we head to the moon. And now everyone has to do their solo fights. So Miranda is first. She fights her flower thing. That's pretty easy. Goes down quick. I think it's scripted and she can't die, but I don't know. Next up is Hashel, who has to fight his daughter, who also is a god, I think. I think. Can't be sure. Then the party gets attacked by Michael the dragon, which leads the party to get separated. So now Kongol has his thing, and he fights Endora, his brother. I think it's his brother, right? Gets Endora's axe. And also, because they didn't backtrack in this, because I don't care, Kongol gets his dragon dragoon spirit, which is, I guess, a little bit exciting, except we're not going to use it at all. You know, not that I ever really use this dragoon spirit to begin with, but whatever. And then we have the dart and rose section where they have to fight Michael the dragon. And this battle is also pretty easy. Rose dies almost immediately to Michael's attacks because she's weak as F. But God, Rose, it's not real. It's illusion of your memory. Just tell us the secret so we can get out of the damn moon and stop the universe from being destroyed, please. And then we have Albert's battle, and that's fine. He breaks both of the swords and does the thing. Meru then fights the Archangel, which I think is also an unlosable battle because it brings you down to one HP and then fully heals you, which is a little bit weird, but whatever. I don't make the rules here. And then the next boss is another Virage. It's like the final Virage thing. There are so many of these, but I'm just glad that they're not all reskins. I'm glad that they sort of made a new Virage design for every single one. They could have just reskinned these and used them all multiple times, but they didn't. And this Virage battle goes off without a hitch. Then we fight Dart's dad, and that's also fine because Dart I put back in the red Dragoon armor, so he absorbs all his fire attacks anyway. The big problem is just waiting for his dad to kill everyone. So before we head on to Melbu Frama, let's just take a quick look at Dart's stats. So he's at level 50, which is tremendous. Like in my normal games, he usually doesn't even hit level 40. Level 35 is kind of a stretch too. Of course, his Dragoon level is at 5. He has 8,701 HP, which is ridiculous. But I mean, that's due to the fact that he has the Phoenix Helm equipped. And his EXP values just dwarf every other member in the party. Look at the comparison between him and Hashel. I mean, it's insane. As far as additions go, he hasn't even gotten his final edition, Blazing Dynamo. We're going with Moonstrike at the end here. But I think it's amazing that because we literally used no one but Dart, it becomes a lot easier in this game for him to demolish every challenge. And if you've made it this far in the video, please, hit that like button to show your support for this channel. It really matters. Thank you so much. We are on to the final boss, Melbu Frama. Now this is like one of the longest boss battles in history. It has like 75 bajillion phases. Well, actually it only has three, but in between each phase, it's like, let's show you a huge cinematic cutscene. And so every time you fight this battle, it takes like a bajillion years. I start the first battle equipped with the Soul Eater, 
Hammer and the Therapy Ring. That's what I've had equipped for all the battles after I got it, except for the one in Xenobatos, because, you know, I didn't want to get instant death. And so a couple minutes into this battle, I noticed that Meru gets petrified, and I kind of shit my pants a little bit, because now I know that I can get petrified in this battle, and would you guess I got petrified? Like, holy guacamole, it's... It's awful. So that is death number eight. God help me. And wouldn't you know it, I forgot to save after I beat Dart's dad. So now I have to do that battle again before I fight Melbu Frama. Why? So I beat Dart's dad. And then I go to Melbu Frama, and I start to fight him again, and uh, I did something stupid. So I had the Soul Eater equipped, and I equipped the D-Stone Ring, and that was dumb, because now I'm losing 10% of my health every turn, and I didn't take the time to go back to the shop to buy more Healing Fogs, so I'm just screwed. But it's looking actually pretty okay, and I actually think I'm going to win until we get to the second phase and he blocks my attacks with command blocking. Isn't that the most frustrating thing that Melbu Frama could do? Like, he's a literal god, he can't just kill me, but he can block my attacks. What the hell? So, because of that, I lose a lot of ground and end up succumbing in the third phase. So, that's death number nine, and I am feeling a little bit frustrated. At this point, I went and I had a drink. I needed a beer very badly after that, because literally each of these attempts took 30 minutes. So now I equip the Mind Crush, which is the most powerful sword I have. I didn't buy the Claymore because I thought I didn't need it. And I equip the D-Stone Ring, the D-Stone Amulet, whatever that's called. And I go back into the battle. And after 45 minutes, nothing goes wrong. And I emerge victorious. So can you beat the Legend of Dragoon with only Dart? Yes, you can. The power of friendship is dead. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Let me know what challenge run you want to see in the comments. Bye-bye.